Welcome to Real Estate Talk, where we're tackling your questions about real estate. Courtney, I got the question for today. Let's get right into it. What steps should I take before buying a house for the first time? Really, the answer to me is all about financing. Like, there's so many different factors, and I kind of want to talk about the first one, and then we can kind of naturally go into the the next one. Uh, But the first factor is really determining your budget. And I don't know about you, Joe, but like, even that sometimes can be a little bit overwhelming. And so when I talk to clients about this, the first question I ask them is, what are you currently paying in rent? Because I really think that that is a good first step. If you are comfortable paying what you're currently paying in rent, I feel like that's a good starting place. And now let's kind of take a look at kind of some other variables Uh, some other expenses, if you will, that you'll have as a homeowner that you don't currently have as a renter. Yeah, I love that. Like start with something that's really familiar to you. This is what you're already doing if you're paying rent. So uh, that's a good starting place. And I really like the way that you frame that. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, as a homeowner, you're going to have property taxes typically escrowed into your monthly payment. Mm -hmm. Uh, You're going to have maintenance. Uh, You're going to have insurance. You're going to have utilities. Um, And, you know, Redfin has a a fantastic budget calculator. It's linked in the description below. But I really think like starting where you are and really having just an honest conversation with yourself about what you currently spend and if that's comfortable or not is a good first step. Yeah, I think that's great. What would what would be a a good second step uh, to you? Let me bridge the gap into like now you have set the stage for you know, what you can afford and what you want to pay. And now how does that translate as step two into your own financial goals? Uh, You know, you have all the context now, but how does this specifically relate to you and what your other goals are? And so Mm -hmm. maybe you take that payment at certain price ranges. Again, you don't have to get super specific quite yet. You sort of have this range in mind, but then how does that fit into the roadmap of the other goals that you have? Whether that if you're sticking with the same house, saving up for the down payment, but maybe you also have debt that you want to pay off. How would that payment fit into you paying off maybe student loan debt or credit card debt, Uh, also establishing an emergency fund? Mm -hmm. Uh, Housing on its own uh, is just one of many expenses that you have. And so I think that now if you bridge the gap between what you said about understanding what the range is and what you can afford, how does Mm -hmm. this net range uh, fit into your own life now? I like to tell clients to look at it from a holistic approach Mm -hmm. because mortgage payment is just one aspect of it. But like you said, looking not only presently what your goals are, but two, three, five years down the line is going to be really important to set yourself up for success now. Yeah. Uh, I don't know about, about you, Joe, but like, I think sometimes the whole goal setting when it comes to finances can be scary to people. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. I think sometimes it's like, Ooh, do I even want to go down that rabbit hole and look at these things? (laughs) Well, I feel that way even now. Uh, (laughs) So (laughs) like it's interesting because we've, we've been talking about a lot about the financing part of starting your search as a first time buyer. And sometimes this conversation happens when you meet them at the first tour where that's, you know, sort of the fun part is going out and seeing homes. I wouldn't discourage you from doing that. You should definitely do that so you can have these conversations. Definitely. But we're bringing it back to financing because yeah. it's not a natural thing maybe to start in that place because it can be a little bit uncomfortable. And like I said, yeah. I'm only browsing online right now and I'm starting to have those uncomfortable conversations with myself. <laughs> exactly. So that that takes us to kind of the last point here. Partnering with a mortgage broker or a lender is going to help you overcome some of that fear. They're not here to judge you. They're here to talk with you about what, you know, what are you paying down? Uh, what can you afford? What does your credit look like? What does your income look like? What does your debt to income ratio look like? And, and they're going to look at your financial history from a holistic perspective to help you get pre-approved for a mortgage. So, uh, Joe, I know this is kind of in my notes, but you want to talk about what is a pre-approval? Yeah, it's going to kind of go back to that first step, really give you a sense of and something to sort of certify what you're yeah. able to afford. And yeah. it, uh, the output really can be and often is like a letter that basically uh, says to you and to anyone whose house you end up buying, uh, this is what this person can afford. Uh, sometimes it's specific as to the value itself. 
Uh, mm -hmm. Sometimes you could work with your agent to say, if I can afford an $800,000 house, but I'm buying a $500,000 house, maybe I don't want to tell the seller that I can afford up to $800,000 as to lose leverage in the negotiation. Yeah. Uh, so sometimes you just put the purchase price in there. There's a lot of different strategies. It really depends on the circumstance. Uh, yeah. But basically the output is this letter that says, me as a buyer can afford you know X price for uh, this purchase. And it, uh, some even go as as far as to start the underwriting process of say, like this person's good to go. If they buy this property, uh, you got nothing to worry about here from a financing standpoint. And most sellers will require some sort of either certification for of funds if it's a cash deal or this letter if it's a, if it's a finance transaction. Yes, to everybody watching or listening to me right now, listen really good. They are going to ask you, meaning the lender, for a buttload of documents, okay? It's normal. <laughs> You're, yeah. Resist the temptation to get irritated. They're just doing their job in looking at all aspects of, like, for example, they'll ask you for bank statements. They're going to ask you for tax returns. Going they're back gonna, years, yeah. Yeah, yeah years, right. exactly. You're, they're going to ask, they're going to pull your credit, right? You might be like, oh my gosh, do you want a hair strand and a blood sample? That's what it's going to feel like. Uh, but I promise it's normal. And you actually want a lender to be thorough in your pre-approval process because you don't want to get under contract on a home just for the lender later on to say, oh, we missed this. And now you can't buy the home. So having a uh, partnering with a good lender and going through that process ahead of time is, is really going to help you in the long run. Yeah, it's almost like the more heavy lifting you do up front to get the lender these things, the less headaches you have down the line. Yes. Uh, so it's going to come up at some point with any lender anyway. And like you said at the beginning, this is what they do. So I think the yeah. best lenders that we've worked with, uh, both as clients uh, and in our roles as brokers and agents, uh, mm -hmm. They really do lend that experience to lend. Uh, that was a that was not even a method. <laughs> I swear yeah. I didn't mean to do that. Uh, that experience to you to say yeah. I do this on a regular basis with hundreds of customers, if not thousands, and here's what I know about the current process. Yeah. And so sometimes if you're dealing with someone that feels a little bit more mechanical, uh, just scale it back a little bit and say, Hey, this is the first time I'm doing this. Could you just slow down a little bit because I'm not sure some of the terms you're using? Yeah, uh, and almost always they just get so caught up in the process where they'd be happy in almost every circumstance to take a step back and you know explain some of the things along the way. Oh, it's such a good point. Don't hesitate to slow them down. Yeah, yeah, because like we're in this day in and day out. It's easy for us to like rattle things off and kind of take for granted our knowledge and experience. But yeah, don't be afraid to ask. That's a really good point, Joe. And, and I will say this, uh, I've said this in previous episodes, but I want to double and triple down on this. Don't count yourself out of the game before the game even starts. No. Okay? You may feel like you can't get pre-approved. Until they start getting in there and running your numbers, you just don't know. So don't count yourself out before the game starts. Go ahead and partner with somebody uh, that's credible uh, that can really paint a full picture on all of your different options. Yeah, great point. A lot of questions we get asked or even earlier where it's like, how much do I need as a down payment amount? I think we yeah. have another video on that too. Yeah. Uh, but don't get caught up in what you hear other people talking about from a lending perspective of, oh, you have to have 10, 20% down. There yeah. are plenty of options available uh, that are as low as 0% down financing in the case of yep. VA. So uh, not to go too far down that place now, but just to your point, uh, mm -hmm. you'll hear a lot of stuff, uh, but really do the homework yourself and then get yeah. through the process of meeting with an agent and a lender that can talk you through some of these things. Absolutely. Well, Joe, this wraps up another episode. We'll be back in an upcoming episode to talk about tips and tricks to help you navigate the world of real estate. Let us know in the comments if you have any questions, if you have any fears related to buying a house, drop them in the comments. We'll be sure to reply and we'll be back uh, with another episode in upcoming weeks. Thanks so much, guys. <laughs>